Hi, I'm Virginia and I've been a medical copywriter for the past four or five years now. And in this video, we're going to talk about the different types of medical writing. I get this question a lot, so let's get into it. The first type of medical writing that you need to know about is regulatory medical writing. And the second type tends to be the more creative side of medical writing and we'll just lump that all together and call it medical communications. So what's the difference between the two main types of medical writing? Each one has its own different audience. And when it comes to regulatory writing, you're mostly writing for pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer or GSK or AstraZeneca. And what you're doing is you are creating documents to help get medicines through the medicines approval process or medical devices through the medical devices approval process. And you need to know the regulations which might be governed by the FDA in the US or the EMA in Europe and other organizations in different parts of the world. Now, you're probably going to be writing things like drug approval documents, uh, clinical trials documents and safety reports. And you need to know the legal and ethical guidelines that govern healthcare. And it's really technical, but it's nice and structured and it tends to pay better than the other types of medical writing. But it can be really repetitive and some people want to scratch their creative itch. And so they move into something like medical communications or medcoms. So if you don't want to do things like writing clinical trial documents, regulatory submissions, research articles or journal articles, and you have a background in medicine or life sciences, or you actually do not have any kind of medical background, then you can try to get into medical communication. So even if you are a student, but I wanted to make it clear that if you are thinking of going into medical writing and doing health blogs and things like that, then you do need to treat it like a proper job because people do this full time. And so if you do not do it well, or you think of it as something that's easy, then you're less likely to hold on to that client or hold on to that job. So just a bit of forewarning there. So with medical communications or medcoms, you'll be working on educational materials mainly for either healthcare professionals or patients, or you'll be creating marketing materials. So that's the kind of the main thing that I do is create things for patients, sometimes for healthcare professionals, and sometimes uh, it will be just for the general public as well, because there can be general marketing campaigns. And there are some things that you can and cannot advertise to the general public. So in the UK, you cannot advertise prescription only medicines, but you can advertise in a certain way over the counter medicines. And then there are some which are general sales list medicines and they have their own different set of guidelines that you need to know before you start writing those kind of promotional materials. So things that you might need to write are research summaries, clinical data presentations, or slide decks for conferences, or even slide decks for sales teams to sell products. And sometimes I've even written a kind of leaflet to help educate the pharmacy team about a new product that we're going to be bringing to market. So it might be like a nasal spray that has a corticosteroid in it. And so people need to know when you can and can't recommend it to a patient over the counter. So there's another type of medical writing, which is medical journalism. And this is when you are essentially reporting the news and you might be writing blogs and articles and news stories, and you might be explaining healthcare advances or medical breakthroughs or public health issues in a way that's easy for people to understand. Or if your public is not the audience, then you might be writing this for healthcare professionals. You might also be a medical copywriter and you might be writing case studies and blogs and website pages or product pages or FAQ pages. So I did a lot of website and also social media posts. And I do a lot of script writing for videos as well, because videos are much easier to understand than writing. So you might be requested to do script writing. And essentially you need to think about how it's going to be presented on screen, who's presenting it and so on. So when it comes to patient education materials, 
It could be brochures or leaflets, or it could be patient information leaflets with instructions as well. So you need to be able to explain what's going to happen to them if it's a medical procedure, or you may need to explain in a clear way how to actually use a medicine. And it needs to be really clear because they're going to be actually following your instructions. So when it comes to medical copywriting, another thing I want to mention is that it's mainly for marketing because copywriting, which is essentially what you produce, we call it copy. So it's not just text or a manuscript, we call it copy. And so when you're writing copy, you are probably going to be writing many little adverts as part of the campaign. And another example of something that I wrote was app descriptions. So trying to dissect what an app is, like what does it actually do? Who is it for? Who can use it? Who's going to benefit from it? What are the benefits? And is there any evidence that it actually works, for example? And then who produced it? Because it's very easy to create software as a service or SaaS as they call it. So you might find that some people who do not have a medical background are creating things like health apps and they're not great. <laughs> so with no with no evidence behind them, they're not great, basically. So I think that ultimately you can write things which are going to be put on the internet or in the app store and you can use keywords. And even for videos as well, you need to use keywords so that people can search and find it online. And there's something called search engine optimization, which you use uh, certain keywords and phrases in specific places and the way you structure information is really important. So, sorry, just to kind of wrap up, uh, remember that health information is just like financial information. It has lots of rules and regulations because it can affect people's lives. And if you want to learn more about medical writing, then check out the fundamentals of medical writing linked in the description box below. And I hope you found this video useful and you can go on to watch the next video. Thank you for watching.